Hey guys, Spirit of the Law here. In this video, I want to look at a big decision you have to make every time you hit Castle Age. The question is, do you make more town centers or just stick with your starting one? It's pretty standard to see players put two extra town centers down, sometimes more, sometimes less, but I really want to know on paper how long does that decision take to pay off when compared to not building extra town centers, and at the same time figure out how far you actually fall behind over the next few minutes as you start that longer term investment. As I run the numbers, I'll assume you're clicking up to Castle Age with 28 villagers, 35 or 42. Basically that gives a range with a reasonable fast castle build, a case where you had some intense feudal age fighting delaying your castle time, and a middle case. For each of these situations, we'll see how big of an economic impact it is to make three town centers versus just staying on one, and how much military in the short term you could have potentially gotten instead. Similar to my how long until a town center pays off video, I'll be turning all resources into the amount of seconds it would take a villager to gather that much, so that way we can easily compare different types of resources at the same time. These are the values I'm going to be using for each of those, averaged over 2 minutes, with double bit axe researched but no wheelbarrow. I think that's a safe assumption for at least the early part of Castle Age, as Castle Age upgrades sometimes get pushed back a bit further. To start with the 28 villager fast castle strategy, clicking up with 28 villagers means you hit Castle Age with around 4500 villager seconds of work while advancing for those 160 seconds. I'll assume you get double bit axe and horse collar on the way up, meaning you hit castle age with somewhere between 3800 and 3900 villager seconds worth of work saved up. How that's divided among resources is based on how you set up your economy, but we'll assume you balanced it properly for whatever your plan is. Just to briefly explain the table, which I'll be using a few times, on the left we have the time that has passed since reaching castle age. You can see it goes up in increments of 25 seconds, since that's how long it takes to create a villager. The next column is how many villager seconds of resources you have if you put down two extra town centers right away. Notice the 3800 villager seconds worth of resources that you have when you hit Castle Age immediately drops to around 1400, because you're using up 550 wood and 200 stone along with some construction time. Over the long term, we'd expect the resources in this case to start rising faster as you get a villager lead and eventually pay off. But at first, it's quite expensive, both for the direct town center costs, but also the extra cost going into each villager. The next column for comparison is assuming you stayed on one town center. Again, notice there is no drop in resources, meaning they're free to be used making extra military or getting technologies. The last column is the difference, meaning how much extra the single town center military focus player has to work with. An important point here is it doesn't cost everything you have to put down those two town centers. Even going up on 28 villagers, you still have about 1400 villager seconds worth of resources at your disposal. So theoretically you should be able to get some techs, make some buildings, or get some military or villagers. It's not a matter of being completely helpless at first if you decide to build two town centers right away. Just to put the initial cost of those two town centers into perspective though, the same amount of resources would get you about six nights. In other words, by putting down two town centers, you're implicitly valuing a long term payoff higher than the value of queuing up six more nights in the short term. Or at least the conventional wisdom is that that is a good trade off. After 75 seconds or somewhere around that, the town center should be done, assuming you use four villagers to build it, and you now have two extra town centers making villagers. At this point, those new villagers have to be seen as an additional cost, though one you can reasonably expect to pay off quickly, as villagers usually pay for themselves in under 3 minutes. 25 seconds later, by building more town centers, you now have three villagers coming out instead of one, giving you technically a villager lead, though at this point you haven't collected any more resources in total, while you've spent considerably more. It's not until after 2 minutes at the earliest that you actually get the first extra villagers working, trying to close the gap. At this point though, even with more villagers working, you're still falling even further behind the military focus player on one town center. The reason of course you're falling further behind is you're still queuing up more villagers. Running all of those numbers for several minutes, you can see the 3 town center boomer doesn't actually catch up until around 9 minutes. 
At its maximum around 4 minutes, the one town center player was theoretically up over 3700 villager seconds worth of resources, which to put it in perspective is enough to gather the stone for nearly two castles. Another way to visualize that is that it's roughly 9 knights, or 20 crossbows. Of course, booming while making military is still possible, but the point is that for a small window, the one town center player can have as much as 50% more free resources to work with. Somewhere in the ballpark of 9 to 10 minutes is just the tipping point where it's balanced though, and after that, the booming player's advantage grows dramatically. Within two more minutes, the three town center player should have about a 3,000 villager second advantage. That's in the range of around an extra 11 knights, or whatever else you want to spend those resources on. Basically, if the one TC player can't gain a big advantage in that 10 minute window, the booming player can quickly pull ahead after that. At the start, I mentioned doing this again for 35 and 42 villagers as well, but really, if you think about it, the cost of the town center and villagers isn't changing. It still takes the same amount of time to pay back, regardless of how many villagers you had at the start of Castle Age. Now that being said, I wouldn't put as much stock into those later numbers, as it's not quite as clean in reality, where a lot of other factors are going to come into play. Ones that would impact the calculation here might be when you get Wheelbarrow and other Castle Age upgrades, as well as how effectively your opponent is raiding your economy. Someone with three town centers under pressure might stop making extra villagers to focus more on military and close that gap, or it could be that the one town center player adds one in later. At the end of the day, this is just an idealized sketch of how a game might play out to give you a ballpark idea and some intuition, but there are a lot of real world factors to take into account from map control and added defense of town centers on one side, and better rating and technologies or military on the other. For this one, I decided to go to an expert player with a reputation for executing one town center pushes to get some practical advice on the topic. I'll be talking to Hera, an expert player who uses this strategy more often than most. I figure he'd be able to share some wisdom about how a single town center strategy in Castle Age works in practice. Let's check it out. Hey man, thanks for joining me. Always nice to chat with a fellow Canadian. Before we start, do you mind just telling us all a little bit about yourself? Yeah, so thanks for having me. And my name is Hera. I've been playing this game for like five years on and off. And, uh, you know, recently I've been playing some tournaments. The most recent one would be uh, the MEM tournament. It's called the Mongrove Chalice Cup. And I'm actually in the quarterfinals of that, and it's ongoing. And, um, yeah. That's an impressive resume, and I'm sure you have a pretty high ELO rating to back it up as well. Well, actually, I recently hit rank one uh, on the ladder, um, but my highest rating was 2K649, I believe, uh, although I usually have around 2K5, which is, you know, top 10 ladder-wise. Cool. So I'm wondering about town centers and any trade-offs with putting down the usual three town centers in Castle Age versus a strategy of going all in and staying on one town center for at least the first little while. Would you say there's a place in the competitive scene for a one town center push? Yeah, I'd say absolutely. I mean, it's great at creating sharp games where like one decision or one play can either win or lose to the game. Um, on average, I'd say I go 1TC like one out of every five games I do. Uh, however, it's very risky. So maybe in like a high stakes scenario, like a tournament game, sometimes it's better off just, you know, adding the town centers and playing a bit more standard. Uh, but it definitely has a lot to do with uh, different civs and different maps. Now, on average, I would say uh, one out of five games is when I'd consider do using it. Okay, so what should you be looking to accomplish when you're going and you're staying on one town center? Uh, so the first one would be map control. So that could be like gaining control of a certain strategic hill, uh, or perhaps, you know, uh, a gold that your opponent has, you want to take control of that area and push him off it. Uh, the second would be killing your opponent's army. And the third would be damaging his economy. And usually you want to hit those kind of milestones in that order. Like at first it sounds counterintuitive because you're thinking you're going 1TC, you want to actually, you know, deal damage to his economy. Uh, but for real, it kind of, you know, if you think about it, it works logical. So the first step is to get control of a hill, uh, and that gives you the, you know, the hill bonus to then take a good fight using your you know, army advantage that you should have. Uh, and then finally, once his army is dead, you can actually just run and sweep through his whole economy. So would you say the point is you're trying to end the game in the real short term when you're going to stay on one town center? Yeah, I think generally you have, you know, a few minutes window uh, and you don't have to rush it in the first like one or two minutes, but you should definitely be uh, looking towards uh, making, you know, a big play or a big push in the near future when you're going for 1TC. So would you say there's certain maps that this strategy is better on? 
Uh, yeah, I think there's basically an opportunity for 1TC on every map. However, you know, some maps are more common. Uh, I think if you take into consideration like a map like Arena, uh, you know, a fast Imperial Age or a Monk Siege push are two common 1TC strategies that you see often. However, like I said, on any map, there's always a way to, you know, make 1TC work. I think what you should be looking for is, will I have a chance to do damage with my early military lead or early, you know, technology lead? And if the answer is yes, then, you know, go for it regardless of the map. So I take it Black Forest would be a really unusual map to try it on. Uh, yes and no, because, you know, most of the time you want to boom. However, there are certain pushes that involves, let's say, a sneak villager or perhaps a lot of mangonels to try and bust through early. Um, so, yeah, like I said, it depends, but I feel like there is a small opportunity on every map. Okay, so do any particular civilizations or strategies come to mind when you think of a one-town center push? Yeah, most definitely. I'd say, um, let me just consider Arabia for the time being. Uh, I'd say the most common 1TC strategies on this map are, you know, monk and siege pushes, where the idea is to uh, build forward siege workshops and monasteries and, uh, you know, push your opponent with that combo. Uh, there's also the 1TC eagles, which is common with usually uh, Aztecs or Incas, uh, and also full knights with, you know, any Civ with bloodlines is, uh, is a good candidate for this one. Let's say you're Franks and you're going to go all in with knights. Let's say that's your yep. strategy. How many stables can you probably sustain at the same time going on one town center versus three? Uh, yeah, so at, at first, usually when you're you know going for a boom, uh, it depends on uh, what happens in Feudal Age. But if it's a standard Feudal Age, let's say Scout Rush into walls into you know Castle Age, uh, if a guy wants to go for a boom, usually he can only afford two stable knight production. And if you're going for one TC, often you can afford the third one. And so what, you, what you'll see is you'll be able to outmatch your opponent with knights and also have the tech advantage. You, you could usually afford uh, one or two extra upgrades. Oh, for sure. But well, you think about how much food is going into those extra villagers. It's got to add up pretty quick. Yeah, definitely. Cool. So do you mind talking a bit more about the pros and cons? Kind of keeping in mind that some stuff that might be obvious to you isn't necessarily obvious to everybody. Yeah, so I'd say that the pros for going 1TC is that generally you're able to outmatch your opponent and you have the opportunity to end the game early. You often get attack advantage as well, so you're able to push through that. Uh, the cons would be that they have defender's advantage, meaning that they can reinforce their units quicker than you, because generally if you're going 1TC, you're going to be taking fights outside their base, and so they'll be able to reinforce faster. Also, you're kind of on a timer, so if you don't make a big play within the first few minutes, then you just get slowly outboomed, and your opponent will out actually you know, be able to outmass you eventually. Uh, so yeah, I'd say definitely the fact that you're on a timer and he has a defender's advantage. Okay. Is there anything that you look for that signals to you that somebody is trying to do this? Like, is there a hint in the score or that they seem to have a few more units than is usually possible? Or is it just something that you have to find out through scouting? Uh, well, like you said, I think the best thing you can do is actually scout, figure out if he's adding the TCs uh, right when he hits Castle Age. But there's also a couple other things you could be doing. The score, like you said, is a big one. So if his score starts rising at the start of Castle Age, that usually tends to mean that he has a lot of military coming out, which is a good indication. Also, one thing that's kind of underrated is clicking your opponent's units to check if he has upgrades. So if they have a lot of upgrades, or at least, you know, more than you, then you could start to be suspicious that he might be on one TC for the time being. Is there any advantage to trying to hide that fact or make it look like you're on a different number of town centers than usual? Uh, I think this depends on the skill level because at a really competitive level, so the highest of levels, they know how to react to it. So if they scout it early, if they see it coming, then they will you know, take the time to prepare and it might not be as effective. However, I'd say from the beginner to the intermediate level, even if the players know that you're going to be going for this, sometimes they just crumble under the pressure regardless and they don't make the right moves to prepare for it. Um, so yeah, I think depending on the level, uh, it could matter or not. Okay, so what would be a good response to somebody that's going all in like that? Like, I assume you're trying to stall, or that's going to be somewhere in the back of your mind. Yeah, so the idea is you want to defend until your economy is able to kick in. Generally, good defensive options are something like a defensive siege workshop, a uh, monastery, and also you'll have, like, either crossbows or knights usually, and usually want to take good trades and, you know, just force your opponent to make an overcommitting move, and that's when you turn the fight. So switching sides, let's say you're the one doing the one town center push and you find that it's losing a bit of momentum. Like, what's your plan at that point? Do you switch to adding more town centers or are you stuck committing to it? Uh, I'd say usually it's best to just commit to it. Uh, oftentimes, you know, at that point where you're starting to lose momentum, uh, it would be too late to try and kick back and just add eco and hope to catch up that way. Um, so definitely just commit to it and... Uh, if anything, just try and find a different, you know, point of attack maybe. So if, you know, down this one hill isn't working, try to switch it up. But, uh, you know, switching to full eco mode usually wouldn't work out. And speaking of economy, what sort of impact does this have on Imperial Age times? I feel like saving all of that food on villagers should theoretically help you advance faster. And is that always the way it works in practice? 
Uh, I think this is a bit of a tricky thing to tackle because, you know, depending on what strategy you're going for, it could either get you a faster Imperial Age, but with obviously a, a much weaker economy than your opponent, or it can just get you an Imperial Age that's very, very delayed, or if anything, like, you know, you'll never get there. Hmm. So what I'm talking about is if you're going, let's say, crossbows, what could happen is that your food, you know, can start to slowly rise throughout Castle Age since you're not actually adding that many more villagers. And sometimes you're able to click Imp reasonably fast. However, if you're going for something like knights, usually you're investing all your food and gold into just military, and you can't really think about your imperial age at that point. Overall, is it a strategy that you would recommend doing, kind of thinking for more average Joes here? Uh, I actually think it's a really good beginner strategy because, like I said earlier, a lot of people don't know how to really react to it. I would recommend doing it, but with moderation, because if you invest all your time learning how to do this one TC push, you know, you start lacking the knowledge of how to boom and stuff, which is much more important. Um, so if you try too hard to always do one TC push, what could happen is that you win a lot of players using that, but you actually don't know how to boom. So you're not actually a better player. So you'd say three town centers in Castle Age would be a better default as general advice for everybody? Yeah, I think that teaches you a lot more about the game and how it works rather than just, you know, learning uh, a one TC build order and hoping that your opponent crumbles under the pressure every time. How do you feel about two town center? Is that a nice middle ground or is that sort of its own thing? Yeah, a lot of people often ask me the same thing. And um, well, I would say a lot of it, you know, we're venturing into the realm of it depends, you know, on um, what's going on in the actual game. Uh, but I would say 2TC is kind of something where you want to start committing to economy early on. However, you know, you also want to be doing a push. So it's kind of the middle ground of both. However, usually I like to actually commit to either military or boom. I don't like to do the in-between. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. So I know that you like to use the one town center play maybe a little more often than some of the other pro players. Do you mind just walking us through an example of how you might specifically use it? Yeah, so something I like to do very often uh, is actually, let's say in Feudal Age that you're going for a certain unit, let's say Archers. Uh, what I like to do is go for Archers all the way up to like halfway up to Castle. So when you click up, uh, usually it's like one or two minutes that you're halfway there. Uh, and then stop Archer production and actually transition into two stable Knight production. And what that does is that once you hit Castle Age, you both have crossbows, you upgrade those first, and then you transition to Knights. But to actually be able to afford all this, what you want to do is on the way up to Castle Age, you want to take the vills off of your wood, uh, you know, most of them, and transition them to farms or on gold. And that way, once you get to Castle Age, you don't have excess wood that normally would be allocated to adding more town centers, but rather you have more food and gold to make that knight transition. This could be super powerful because an army composition of crossbows and knights is super difficult to stop, and most times people can't deal with it. At what point do you need to actually decide that you're going to commit to this? Is this something you need to know as early as Dark Age, or you need to know on your way to Castle Age, or just spontaneously when you hit Castle Age, you decide? Where's that point you make the decision? I think generally in Dark Age, you start to get signs of potential 1TC play ahead of you. Usually this means like multiple golds or stones in the same spot, uh, a massive hill outside your opponent's base that you can take advantage of. But also there's a lot of stuff that in the Feudal Age would help you decide whether to go for it or not. For example, if you deal some damage in Feudal Age, oftentimes you can just transition into 1TC and finish your opponent off. If you make that decision, you have to fix up your economy accordingly. So take the case of uh, 2TCs. So generally, you know, when you get up to Castle Age, if you want to add 2TCs, that's going to cost you 275 times 2. And uh, well, 550 wood is quite an investment. And if your opponent's investing that into town centers, uh, you'll have that same amount of resources, but invested into military. And 550 resources can really make the difference between winning or losing a fight. So you should definitely take into consideration what your opponent is investing into his economy and how you will have that resources invest into your military. And based on that, you can you know, decide whether to take fights or not. Cool. Well, I appreciate you taking the time to do this. If someone's interested in seeing more of this in practice, is there somewhere they can go to see more of your gameplay? Currently stream pretty much every day on Twitch, so twitch.tv slash Hera AOC. And uh, you can you know expect to see some really high level 1v1s, some you know team games, uh, and also do some coaching for the intermediate to beginner players. Um, I also have a YouTube channel uh, that's kind of uh, you know up and coming, but I upload the best uh, games from Twitch onto there and some guides and builders as well. So that was my interview with Hera. He had a good mix of general and specific strategy advice. I really liked how he pointed out that this is something you add to your repertoire when you want to go all in and finish the game quickly, and not a strategy you want to rely on all the time. Knowing how to boom on multiple town centers is still an important skill to know as well. That'll do it for this one though. Thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you next time.